Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Esoteric Atlanta. Of course, my name is Bryce, and I am joined here with my beautiful friend and partner in crime, Stephanie from Spiritual Perspectives of Our Great Awakening. Stephanie, how are you doing? Hey, hey. Just another day. Just another day in paradise. It's gorgeous out today. I don't know if you guys can hear the wind. I'm in my in my sunroom. I finally got it cleaned out because it becomes the catch-all room every winter. So I got yeah. it cleaned out. And here, yeah, for, for when you come to visit me one day, maybe one day. I'm not putting any dates out <laughs> We're not sure yet. One day. I know, I know when I'm traveling, but I'm not putting dates out because there are some sinister people out there in the world. So... But I'm super, super, super excited. In fact, I can't wait to get back on the road again because Stephanie, somebody called us the dynamic duo. I either it was on my page or Aquarius Rising Africa's page. I can't remember which page they called us the dynamic duo. And I think we have a future in this. I think we have, we're like the grown up version of the boxcar children. <laughs> like, <laughs> I still love this series. Me too. I'm like, we're like the like legit adult whodunits, but it's not a whodunit. We're like, what happened? What happened was like, what is going on here? What's the true story? Because as I have said before in my life, I love history. History was a subject that I never had to study for. I just retained it, remembered it well. I think it's because I love uh, humans. I love the stories of humans. And so history was always like that story of humanity, right? Like what humanity had gone through. And especially, you know, both Stephanie and I being white American women, we were fed this story that our ancestors came over here on boats. And so we have this separate heritage as well, not just as an American, but wherever our ancestors came from. And when we discovered Tartaria, and I think I don't can't, I, I had learned about Tartaria. I started learning about Tartaria about a year ago. I don't remember when the first time was that you heard Tartaria, Stephanie, but about a year about ago, literally two months ago. <laughs> oh, it's very new to me, but you know what? I'm like, you told me about it. I watched that documentary and I'm like, holy shit. We need to look into this shit because what a liberating thing it is. And it, and, and it starts to make, it start, makes everything seem to make more sense after you start to dive into that stuff. Once you see it, you can't unsee it. It's like with any, with any of these lies. Exactly. Exactly. And um, I saw a quote today, actually, I took a screen grab of it. And I thought it was fantastic. Because I is according to like, society standards, I am highly educated. I'm highly educated. I have my degree, all that kind of stuff. But here's the quote. You've been lied to about everything. The literate of excuse me, the illiterate of the 21st century will not be those who cannot read or write, but those who cannot unlearn the many lies they've been taught to believe. Yep. And finding that am amongst a bunch of academics is they're having a, which I feel sorry for people who have their PhD in history because literally you have your PhD in fairy tales. And that's coming from somebody like myself that's a lover of history and believed everything and wanted to discover it and wanted and was proud of my ancestors. And now I'm like, well, that was a bunch of hocus pocus. Um, and that's something that we're going to be kind of looking at with all these places that we go to. And we, we look at, we're looking at many different things going on, but part of that is what is the truth behind these locations? And we have done a video on Oakland cemetery. We have obviously spoken about, um, the guide stones, which I was going to do a full video on the guide stones, but there's no need to now because <laughs> that story made national news. So, um, <laughs> so, oops, that's all I can say. At least we looked cute. At least we looked cute on the video. Well, at least if something happens in DC after we were there, we can say, oops, I did it again. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, <laughs> if we had anything to do with those guide stones, oops. And we had no clue. We had no clue. You're welcome. You're welcome. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, that must really piss the controllers off because the controllers are really high level witches and warlocks. And Stephanie are like, what do we do again? <laughs> um, we, need, we need like 
we need white white magic for dummies basically we have no idea so that must have really pissed them off if if our blessing of the land had anything to do with that they must be really upset by now <laughs> no, we we outsmarted them we got it so anyway we're, we're joking guys um, of course, we were in D.C., which we have presented. We did a, a more extensive presentation on Aquarius Rising Africa um, earlier this week over at D.C. I will tag that video down below if you haven't seen it with our friend Shanti and Mornay, who I can't wait. So boxcar children, how many of them? There were like five of them, right? If I can remember correctly, not two. So I think we need like Mornay, Mornay Shanti, and Tamara. Yeah, that, I love that. That. I love that. That's going to be a kick-ass team. I mean, the amount of channeling we could do with the five of us. And um, Mornay, Mornay, Mornay is going to be surrounded by us females. That poor man. I think he can handle it, though. He's so yeah, sweet. He's, Mornay is like one of my favorite humans in the whole wide world. He is just like one big ray of sunshine. He signed on earlier this week to do our show on Monday, and he had this beautiful white top on, and he was like fixing his hair. He looked like an angel just coming on yeah. screen. I know. I was like, oh my God, I just love Mornay so much. And I hope he, he already knows. I think once we can travel, I'm going to his house in Namibia. And I'm just going to live there for a while. So if you don't know that morning, Mornay, just prepare, just make a room for me because <laughs> where he lives is absolutely gorgeous. So um, I do plan on, on go, and, and moving in for a little bit, Mornay, a little bit, Mornay. She's fun. I'm fun. So, um, <laughs> But I can't wait to do more traveling and more. Uh, and we're literally, you know, guys, we're having fun with this, too, because when it comes to our true history, we know for a fact that the 99 percent of us get one set of history books and then the one percent get the other set of history books. And the only things we have to go off when we're trying to figure out the truth of what's going on is what we know about Tartaria and what our intuition is telling us. And what we're going to start with. So today we're going to be talking about Myrtle Hill which we've already covered Oakland Cemetery. This is another cemetery here in Georgia that we're going to cover. Um, I will tag the Oakland Cemetery episode down in the description box below if you missed that one. Um, I think uh, this Monday on Aquarius Rising Africa, we're going to be talking about this again, talking about these different cemeteries and just things to look for. Because what Stephanie and I are doing, in all honesty, I keep telling you guys, like we're just two normal American women. Again, I'm filming out of my bedroom. One day I'll give you guys a tour of the room I'm actually in and what it really looks like. I'm against a wall in my bedroom. Stephanie's in her sunroom. We're no different than any of you guys watching right now. And so what I hope by us showing you this footage, what I hope it's going to do too is it's going to inspire everybody watching right now to look around your own backyard. Look around your own backyard. Look wherever you are in the world. We know Tartaria was all over the world. So wherever you are in the world, go and look around your own backyard. Go study the history, the history of your town, and then question it. And that's where we're going to start today because I've had a few people ask me about research. Like, how do we research? And I'm starting to talk about that more because I didn't realize that this was maybe a skill that a lot of people didn't understand or know how to do. And so the way that I research, guys, is especially when it comes to these stories, is I always start, you have to start somewhere. And so where I start with these stories is I start with what we know according to what we have been taught. So I always want to start with what is the official narrative. And so that's what we're going to go through first with Myrtle Hill. Then with Stephanie, we're going to start to break it down a little bit. Now, at the end of this video, you're going to see us at Myrtle Hill doing the cards, looking at divination and stuff like that. Now, Myrtle Hill Cemetery is located in Rome, Georgia. We have spoken about Rome, Georgia a little bit. That's where I spent a good a bulk of my childhood was in Rome, Georgia. It's about an hour outside of Atlanta. Um, Rome, Georgia is considered to be a historic town. It's an old town, which, again, we're going to talk about. It's probably a lot older than we actually know it is. And um, it's a very wealthy town. We'll go ahead and tell uh, our viewers, um, Stephanie, what was your impression of Rome as far as the wealth in Rome? It was weird because, so you would have, you know, you brought me around the whole town pretty much. It does have a cute little downtown area. You know, you can walk to all the shops and everything. And that was probably my favorite part of the town itself, along with where your mom is, because I thought that was adorable too. Like, just, it felt, it didn't feel demonic or anything. But when you get into the out, 
the, all these different neighborhoods, especially in that downtown area, um, when you're going like beyond that one strip of like shops and everything, it starts to get a little bizarre because you have this, um, these, these neighborhoods of great wealth. Obviously, you can look at the homes and go, wow, these are gorgeous, giant homes. Um, there was this one road you brought me to that weaved in out of the, the forest, and it was gorgeous, and lots of land, land, and it's beautifully maintained. And you have the um, Darlington High School that you went to, which was on a, ver a plot of land that was gorgeous and, and very, very wealthy, but interweaved, not, not in a separate location, but interweaved was also a disturbing amount of great um, uh, poverty. I yeah. mean, and I'm not just talking poverty. I'm talking really low, low, low end poverty, like very disturbing. And so it was just bizarre because you would think a town of great wealth would just be in one little district of the town where the poverty um, part of the town would be like where I grew up, which is Berlin, Connecticut. We had a, we have, there was three different um, uh, suburbs of the town. So you have Kensington, which is the believe, of course it's the richer part of town, Kensington. Mm -hmm. And then you have, the regular Berlin area, which is where I was in, that was the more upper middle class to regular middle class. And then you had East Berlin, which was the poor side of town. So that in the town I grew up in, which we'll investigate one day um, when you come up by my way. <coughs> but in your hometown, it was like interwoven. It was almost like the rich wanted to say, ha ha, look what you can't have kind of a thing. It was kind of like, that vibe that I got from the town it was bizarre. And I had never seen anything quite like it before while going into this little town. It was just bizarre. Yeah. And so I grew up within the, in the grouping of people with the extreme wealth. Um, I, the Darlington that I went to is one of the top 10 boarding schools in the country. There is a lake with swans on it. We have spoken briefly about Darlington. There's a lot of, um, controller imagery at that school. Um, we have gotten in divination that they had to capitulate. Um, I know beyond divination, I know that they have had to some come to some lawsuits regarding some inappropriate actions of intimacy towards uh, young ones, we'll say. Um, I, I kind of think it's ridiculous that people spend more money to send their children to high school than they do to send them to university. Same with in my case. I think that's ridiculous, but it is, it is, um, it is lineage. Both of my parents went to private schools. My granddad went to a private school. So it's a lineage type of thing. When we're talking about the wealth in Rome, Georgia, we are talking about old, 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 old Southern money. Southern money where I don't think some people really even know where the money originated from. Now there is quite a difference between old money and new money. Um, old money, in my opinion, generally speaking, every human is different, but just generally speaking, old money seems to be a little bit more humbled in a lot of ways and a little bit kinder. Um, I know a lot of the Coca-Cola people who are very humble and very kind. You would never know it by just passing them on the street that they were that wealthy. Um, I did not enjoy my time living in Rome, Georgia. My family, even though my grandparents, all four of my grandparents are buried in Rome, which you will see in a video with one set of grandparents, none of my grandparents are from Rome, Georgia. So here's the thing about Rome, Georgia, which we're going to talk a lot about, especially hitting on the real wealthier side of the town, is that for a lot of the people I grew up with, they have deep rooted heritage in this town. Um, allegedly from what they're what they've been told and we're going to do more stuff on this town too we're going to do the clock kill there's some other stuff we're going to do with with Rome coming up um, that was never me because my mom's family the Bryce's yes again Bryce is my mother's maiden name they are from the coast of South Carolina um, my dad's dad is from Knoxville Tennessee which we're actually going to talk about Knoxville that's around where the um, Isis temple was where we were with Bonnie and then my dad's mother was from South Georgia 
she claims her family came up through New Orleans. They were of French descent. So the only Georgia ancestry I have is actually my, um, my dad's mom. Um, I was born in South Carolina. My sister was born in Athens, Georgia. And then we moved back to Rome because my father became a partner in a veterinary clinic in Rome, Georgia. He's a vet. So I grew up in the wealthier side of Rome. I did go to Darlington, very expensive private school. We were members of the country club. You and Tyler got to go to the, um, my mother told us to, we used to we utilize the country club one day at the pool. And so that was <clears throat> the group of people that I grew up around. I knew a lot of, there's a, actually the very last, um, I don't know if we've asked this question before, but we'll ask it at the end when we close up this episode, the very last rally, or we'll say party rather, that Mr. T had before the big competition of 2020 was held in Rome, Georgia at the private airport. There's a private airport where private planes will fly into. My great uncle used to fly in there privately all the time. He had his own plane. A lot of people I know have their own planes. That's the type of money that we're talking about um, that, that is in Rome. And so when we're thinking about these nefarious goings on, I just want you guys to keep that in mind when we're talking about this town, okay? So um, before we get into it, though, now I have mentioned before that I had a very traumatic childhood, a lot of assholes in my life in the human kind, but I also was very spiritually attacked when I lived in Rome, very spiritually attacked a lot. Stephanie, what was your experience spiritually in Rome? So my experience, I know validated your childhood experience because what started to happen was I start my day off working out, feeling rejuvenated. You know, I um, had energy. And then we would go out to a place like Myrtle Hill Cemetery or the Clock Tower or something. Or especially that day we went out to that university that we have Very spoken cool. about. <laughs> Very yeah. college. And um, what happened is. I would suddenly go from having a lot of energy to feeling like I could literally fall asleep while walking. And it was, it's not your average tiredness. It had nothing to do with the heat because yeah, Georgia's hot and humid, but Connecticut is not too far off during the summertime to that. It's not anything that I'm not used to. So it didn't greatly affect me that way. Um, so nothing to do with the weather. And actually, I think I came down during a rather cool period of time in Georgia. I wasn't like extreme hot to me. Anyhow, it wasn't. Um, and so it had nothing to do with the external stuff. Um, it was more or less spiritual stuff, I felt, because of where we were on location. So things like the cemetery or Berry College or um, the clock tower. And um, so it, after visiting these places... I would start to feel quite lethargic. I mean, it was, it was like, um, it was a very abnormal type of lethargic. It had nothing, like I said, it had nothing to do with me traveling, nothing to do with that because, you know, I had slept well the night before. Like I actually do my sleep my rather well. House, my mom's house is really nice and it's really in, good energy. In that bed, I'll take that bed back in a heartbeat. I could live in your mom's house because it felt, first of all, she was, you know, Southern hospitality, I felt very comfortable in under her roof. Um, so I, and I was getting plenty of rest and I was doing my workouts. And um, we were busy enough during the day where we I, I did sleep well. Um, so I had nothing to do with that. And once once I got, you know, through the front of the driving, I did get a, a lot of sleep. So again, it had nothing to do with that jet lag type of feeling or anything like that. It was more or less like I had not felt this type of tiredness since my own childhood in my hometown. It was yeah. that bizarre. Or actually when I lived with my son's father at the time, back about 15 years ago, his hometown is quite haunted, like really wackadoodle haunt. Like I'm talking demon infested haunted kind of a thing. So yeah, I think like Rome is demon infested. Yeah. That's what I, I would tell my mother that in high school, I would tell my parents that this town is demon infested and yeah. they never believed me. And I got really sick in high school. I was scratch marks all over me. I think I've spoken about that in another video before, so I won't go over that again, but it almost feels like something in another realm is take, taking a hose 
and connected it to you and it's just it's siphoning cool. it's like it's like your oh. it's like your gas oh. tank that you have not literal gas guys okay but like your gas tank is being siphoned of the fuel that you need to go throughout the day now one thing i want to point out is after our time at it was either the cemetery or berry college i think it was the cemetery i came home with her i mean not home but your your mom's home i came back with horrific uh like um body aches being very lethargic i was starting to burn a very high fever i got really really sick and then i ended up with what I, I'm pretty darn close. Uh, like I'm pretty darn like sure I was close to having pneumonia. Like yeah, I yeah. got very ill on the trip, and that day is when I got ill. It was in Rome, Georgia. Well, actually, let's ask that first. I wasn't planning on asking this, but cancer is really high in Rome, and people think it's because there's a paper mill out in West Rome. But I'm starting to think that the cancer is so high because there's so much demonic activity going on in Rome, which we're going to get to. So can we ask the cards that Stephanie, do people in Rome, Georgia get sick a lot, get especially high, high rates of cancer, including my own grandparents, my mom's mother, her family did not have any cancer in their family. The minute they moved to Rome, she gets breast cancer. So can we just ask is, is this sickness in Rome? Does it have to do with the demonic activity or is it something more human based like the paper mill or chemicals? And I will add to this guys, there is a high grouping of Freemasonry in Rome, Georgia as well. A lot of Freemasons in Rome, Georgia. It's not, it's not the demonic stuff. It's literally the energy that, summons the demonic energy so it's the, the activities going on yeah it's um okay so it's stuff there's there's a lot of blockage of energy that's what causes cancer to begin with is a, a an energy blockage right so, so it's not the have, demons themselves it's the activities that are happening yeah in rome so these people the activities, that's activity, it's like a love offering. So we can even look at that poorly aspected, poorly aspected as a possible sacrifice activity. Okay. Oh, yeah, sure. of course. Yes. So hangman, three of swords, which is endings from, and, and then this is people of high wealth. So high wealth, the, it's the activities that they're doing. It's not the demons per se. It's the activities that summon in the demons. Can I ask this then? Because a lot of the people that get this are of that society. Are the people that get the cancer, not all of them, but some of them, are they, are they themselves offerings by family members? They might not know it. That's is that why they get And this is just generally, guys, I know some people who have passed away of cancer in that town that are close friends of mine, and I definitely know that that was not the case. They did not have family members doing that, even though they might have gotten sick from the activities around them. This is just generally speaking, but there no, are really family cards. I can't get any more obvious than that. I have the Hierophant with the death card, with the 10 of cups, with the judgment card. <coughs> this is obvious, guys. If you don't know what the cards mean, this is actually still obvious. So you have the Hierophant card, which is normally my my C A B A L card. I got it right. I got it right. Basically, is what that's saying. The death, yeah. death card. So that's the sacrifice. Ten of Cups is family members and judgment. Yeah, they. Yeah, absolutely, one hundred percent. Look at on the bottom of the deck. I got the seven, seven of Swords. That's like sneaky behavior. Son, the wild. I basically grew up around psychopaths. Will you ask the card that did I grow up around psychopaths? I think a lot of us did. A lot. I, mean, of I would beg my parents, like, we're not from Rome. We could leave. We had no ties to that it town. Takes, it takes a very high level of spirituality to recognize it, though. And I explained that to you before. Is some people are just not going to see it. My mom doesn't see it. She sees it to an extent, and then she pulls back. She doesn't well, want it. The cognitive dissonance there. She knows I was spiritually attacked. She knows that, but she won't. Re she won't make the connection. You can only lead her to water. Up to her whether she drinks. 
let's see. What was I asking again? Sorry. Um, what were you asking again? <laughs> yeah, I grew up around a bunch of psychopaths. Did I specifically grow up around a bunch of psychopaths? I know I was around psychopaths at my high school. I know that. I know majority of the administration and majority of my teachers were fucking psychopaths. Who got their kicks abusing children. Openly. Openly doing it. I mean, I got the six of pentacles, which is like payment to the fool, which is like changing a path with two of cups, which is like... um deals made with the high priestess i mean you could look at it that way i'm not necessarily getting psychopaths but i'm getting there could be people interweave in your childhood that had dirty deals yeah oh i'm sure i'm sure i'm sure yeah okay that just um so can we ask the cards just one last time just for my own pride i guess when i was a child and i would cry to my parents and beg them to leave that town. And I would tell them that I could, I could literally see demons hanging in the trees. I remember telling my dad that once we were down by the river. And I was like, there are literally demons hanging in the trees right now. You cannot see that. He was like, no, I can't see it. Was I right as a child? Was I right in these conversations with my parents? Was I speaking the truth? I remember that conversation was like, like it was yesterday. I was with my dad and I was literally pointing at the trees and like, dad, there are demons hanging in these trees can you not see them yeah i mean you you notice things that could not be seen with the naked eye because i have the moon and the high priestess card which is telling me you saw uh behind the veil you saw the spirit realm but <clears throat> you needed to there was there was some work for you to do and you didn't like it but it was for your life work you needed to know that you had these gifts. So this was an opening for you to see you were gifted. So I'm getting from the cards here that I was um, telling the truth. You, you, you did see them to answer the question. Yes. And even though it might've been a little bit on the traumatic side for you, there was a lot that you learned about yourself due to these experiences. So there, there was a purpose behind it. So it's not just, you grew up traumatized by these experiences. You started to learn as an adult, looking back on these experiences, that you have great power in seeing behind the veil. As I pulled that. <laughs> there you go. So you look at it in a, in a perspective that I saw, I saw that I, I'm gifted in this. It was traumatic and then release it and move on. So two more questions before we get to Myrtle Hill, because I'm hoping this is helping other people because I know there are more towns like this. So that's what I'm hoping that my story, things I share, things Stephanie shares, that we can help people validate their own experiences. Because I know that we're not the only two people in the whole world that have ever experienced. There's a bunch of us that have experienced this. So I'm hoping that this will validate um, a lot of people watching right now. So just to understand how toxic this town is at this moment i don't think it will be this forever because there is healing going on but at this particular moment and the level of toxicity that was there when i lived there as a, a teenager and a child would i be able to survive living in that town again given your experience of what you felt too if somebody okay. like you could survive it but you might get really sick again you would survive it but you get really really sick until the town is clear of the energy. However, it doesn't mean you can't tr transmute that energy yourself. Yes. Well, let me ask. I'll ask the cards just for shits and giggles, but that's what I I'm intuitively to, getting. What I want to say to people is that if you were in a town situation like that, where you feel like the town itself is draining you of energy and you're having a hard time getting up out of bed and you know it's not, like as our friend Cindy says, is this your stuff? If this isn't yours, because that wasn't yours when you experience that aroma, it's not your stuff. Mm -hmm. That type of lethargy is you literally being drained. So I would encourage, if people are feeling like they're crazy and they don't understand it, but you have an option to leave that situation for the time being, I would just suggest that you do leave the situation in order to take care of yourself. Um, Atlanta is extremely haunted, but I don't feel the same lethargy in Atlanta that I do in Rome. And Stephanie, you can probably validate that as well, being in both places now. 
they're not that far from each other. A lot of people so, that live in North Carolina. I mean, to answer your question, you have the authority and the ability to transmute the energy there. You could you could sit there and sit there and say, "I'm going to get sick and actually get sick," or you can literally cha- transmute the energy. Literally, you it have that power. power. So for people in this situation, and you experience that, Stephanie, what it's like to be in Rome and have your energy just ruined. So it's literally what you're willing to deal with at this at this moment. For yes, people in- but we have to also be confident in the fact that we're stronger than the dark if we're of the light. Never allow the darkness to overtake you or make you feel like you're any less or less powerful. This is where we spiritually regain our sovereignty back. We are more powerful than that. It's all in the mindset. And what you decide to do with the energy. That's what I'm getting. You could surrender to it and become very upset and get sick, like I said. Or you can and I will say, it. for me specifically, there's no way in hell I would ever live in Rome, Georgia again. And I mean, mainly that's because I have zero good memories of that town, like zero. Yeah. I don't. I don't enjoy being there. I enjoy being there with you. I enjoy being my parents' house, but that's it. Like when I have to drive into that town, I get major anxiety, like a major anxiety about being there. Um, I just don't ever see myself ever. If I had a child, I would even debate taking them there as a young, as a young baby. That's how hesitant I am with, because it is, and I loved my friends there growing up. It's just that town at this point is so fucking toxic. It's so, it's just so dark, isn't it? The energy is just so heavy, isn't it, Stephanie? It depends where you are in the town. It's not the whole town. It's where you are in the town. It was particular. like, if I stayed at your mom's house the whole time, I probably would have not gotten sick. Yeah. If I went to Schroeder's, that, that little joint that we went to out to dinner, what do you call it? Schroeder's or whatever? <laughs> Schroeder's, yeah. Yeah, Schroeder's. You no, know, if, if I went there another time, I would have been fine. Honestly, I believe it was between the cemetery and Barry College were the two places. Even even when we went to the country club to go swimming, I did not get any bad energy there. Again, it was old money, so people didn't display new money. It, it was a very humble place. I didn't feel out of place. Um, listen, I don't ha- we don't have a lot of money, so I was a little nervous to go to a country club. I mean, I grew up around a boatyard, so I mean, it's kind of a similar kind of a thing. So I kind of figured it would be very, very similar. But I didn't feel uncomfortable. I didn't feel out of place at all. Um, there's only one of us that felt out of place, and that's when the girl started walking by, and that was my son. <laughs> Not teenagers. And I'm like, oh, Tyler, go talk to those girls. All of a sudden, he was like, Phew. his, like, his no. total, he, he just went into total, like, disarray. Like, he has oh, no clue how to interact with girls at this point. That's partially my fault. But, you know, I took him out of school, so his social skills are kind of going downhill a little bit. But, anyways. Um, (laughs) plus he was around me and you, so that didn't help either. But I mean, other than that, I mean, it was more or less the downtown, not the shops, but the other part of the downtown, the clock tower, Berry college, the cemetery, those type of areas. Uh, I went to, now I didn't bring you on the property. We just drove through it and just driving. And it was, it was like, I couldn't gauge the energy per se, but all I could say is. I'm pretty good at judging, not, I don't want to say judging, but feeling an energy from even afar because energy is energy. Um, <clears throat> and when I looked at the school out the, the car window, I just looked at it and I'm like, no. Yeah, not I have, yeah, when I think about high school for me, like my stomach starts to knot again. And it, it's my, my issues with my high school are not like normal people's issues with high school. I have nothing against the people I went to school with. In fact, the people I grew up with and went to school with, I think we were all in a level of survival ourselves. Because not only was there nefarious spirituality going on, I know that some of those teachers and administrators are Satanists. I know that. You don't. It goes down to the public school too. I mean, I look back at my high school and I could probably tell you right off the bat who could potentially, who could potentially be part of the club. That yeah, I, I mean, they had money. Oh, teachers yeah. Had a lot of money. I admit the people at my school, too. The in- private school teachers tend to make a lot less than public school teachers, and they were all wealthy, and they're doing dirty deeds. And we would have chapel on Wednesdays. Now, our chapel, 
is the most disgusting looking. And we're talking about a private school that costs like 25 grand a year to go to with all those students, you got money. Why aren't you making this chapel look better? It's got red carpet. Like it's, it was so nefarious looking at it. I'm like, this is a satanic chapel. In my opinion, from what I know, this chapel is satanic. Well, most yeah. of them are anyway. Now we know they're all fucking satanic, but um, I mean, you don't have to be an, a genius to look around the school if you're on the campus and be like, that's, that's Illuminati. That is two. That is two. That is two. Oh, look, there's a Baphomet. Oh, look, there's another Baphomet. And to know the teacher there, I, I know exactly, I'm not going to say the name of this one person I was high up at the school. No, he's a psychopath. Actually, I've had you pull on him off camera before we got that. He was very much in the club. Not channeling that person, by the way, guys. Not no. channeling this that person. I first wanted us to know for my own safety. So now I know. And so, um, and, and none of the kids in my class, if I remember correctly, there was no issues with like, kids being mean. And I think, I think, I really think a lot of it had to do with every single child was trying to survive because kids were openly abused at that school. Um, there's a lot of lawsuits going on now with kids and as adults now filing lawsuits against the school for intimacy, forced intimacy with, a, you know, what we're talking about. Um, so I think everybody, regardless of whether it was someone like me that could spiritually experience it or someone who couldn't spiritually see it or experience it, but was trying their best not to be, rape deed by a teacher. So I think that for me, looking back at my high school experience, it makes me want to vomit. And I know I have a hard time. I try to talk to my mom about it. I think my parents or my moms, especially, especially like shut down because I know there's guilt there. I, I feel like there's guilt there because there's no denying it at this point because there are lawsuits happening. Um, it's not just speculation or feelings or intuition. There are actual lawsuits happening now. So I know that there's guilt there probably with a lot of parents and they just don't want to acknowledge it, that they sent, that they not only forced their children to go there, but paid money, paid money for their children to go there too. And a lot of, a lot of a lot of times I think that me getting sick, my, um, sophomore year of high school and having to like do my work from school, from home. And then my junior year, I had back surges. The same thing happened. I do. I think a lot, of, a lot of that, I think, actually saved me. It got me out of a situation, un unbeknownst to myself. So anyway, all right. So let's get to Myrtle Hill after that introductory to the town. So Myrtle Hill Cemetery. So let's just read this little website quickly, and then I'll tell you some of the more of the history. So established in 1857, this cemetery is on the National Register of, of Historic Places, which is a huge red flag. Anytime you see a, a building or a plot of land is registered with the historic places that's registered with the government, big red flag. It consists of 32 acres and six levels where more than 20,000 people are laid to rest. Originally known as Fort Stovall, this site was instrumental in the seas of Rome during the Civil War, which we're going to talk about. A Confederate cemetery section within Mortal Hill holds 377 soldiers from the North and the South who were either from Rome or lost their lives while in the city. Myrtle Hill is also home to Veterans Plaza where Charles Graves, America's own so soldier of World, World War I is buried. Adjacent to his final resting place is a monument erected by the United, by the United Daughters of the Confederacy to the memory of General Nathan Bedford Forrest for his brave, Bravery and valor in protecting the city by the siege by uh, by the Yankees. <laughs> we always still revert to people from the north as Yankees down south. Murder Hill is also the resting place of Ellen Axon Wilson, wife of President Woodrow Wilson, which he is the president that signed in the Federal Reserve, which Ellen Axon Wilson. Um, I have put a video on my channel before. One of my mom's really good friends, Beth Jones, is a descendant of Ellen Axon Wilson. And she has told some stories before, which I'll try to remember to, to tag those videos down below. We're, we're going to ask about this. Um, Rome's historic Myrtle Hill Cemetery has over 35 different species of trees. Many trees are rare and many are not native to Northwest Georgia area. Printed, uh, printed and online tree tour maps allow you to find and locate all tree species of Myrtle Hill. Um, there's all sorts of different. Uh, you can go to the, the cemetery yourself and do your own tour as we did or i think you actually can uh, register with the town and have a guided tour so let's go ahead and i'm going to just kind of go through some of the history of rome as well all right so 
Myrtle Hill is the second oldest cemetery in Rome, Georgia. Again, guys, this is the history that we know that they've taught us. This is what they've taught us in the history books. Not necessarily what the truth is, but what the official story is. So once again, it's the second oldest cemetery in Rome, Georgia. South of downtown, the top of the cemetery overlooks Broad Street, where Schroeder's Deli is, where that whole downtown area is. Named after a flower that goes rapidly on the hill. It's again, 32 acres and six terraces. This is going to come important later. And it's one of the seven hills of Rome. And once again, placed on the National Registry of Historic Places on September 1 of 1983. Now the story goes, let's first ask this question about the, one of the seven hills of Rome. So Rome, Italy has seven hills around it. And that is allegedly why the founding fathers of Rome, Georgia named this area, this town Rome was because there were seven hills around it. So let's first ask the cards. Well, no, I'm not going to ask if this story is true or not, because there are seven hills around Rome. So let's ask if Rome, Georgia is named after Rome, Italy, or if Rome, Italy is named after Rome, Georgia, or can we ask that in a separate way? Like, is this the original Rome? Rome I'll ask if it's the original. Yeah, I have because, I have mixed feelings around it, and I'll explain why in a second. But we can ask. Hold on. There's also a Romulus and Remus statue in Rome, Georgia, that allegedly was given to the town from Rome, Italy, as a sister city. If you guys know the history of Rome, Italy, Romulus and Remus were the founders of Rome, Italy. They were raised by a wolf. This is where we get Lepercalia, which is where Valen part of what Valentine's Day comes from with the nefarious shenanigans of all that involve are involved in leprocalia. I did do a video on leprocalia a long time ago, which if I can remember to place it in the description box, I will. <clears throat> now I will say I have spent time in Rome, Italy as well. Um, and I get a very different energy from Rome, Italy than I do from Rome, Georgia. Let's just put it that way. Very different energy. Not necessarily getting, it's the original, but I am picking up something that I think there's many things that make up the, what we would call the original Rome. I don't think it's just one town. I think it's a cluster of different towns. We're the, saying, Roman Empire, the Roman Empire is definitely not what we think it is. Like the, we're in the yeah, Roman Empire. I don't think that the original Rome is necessarily a town. That's just my opinion. Um, but, so I'm not getting it's like, necessarily yes and i'm not getting no but what i all i am getting that they did send artifacts from one place to another so some of the artifacts they have in rome italy actually belong in rome georgia or vice versa yeah no i think it would be uh because there are no artifacts in rome georgia i mean the only thing we have in rome georgia is the romulus and remus statue which is a uh, yeah. I mean, they definitely did change something with it. It made it into something that it's not. I mean, something it's like we're not hearing the full there's something around this even the cards aren't even saying. It's like there's something else we're, we're not, we're missing. You know what I mean? I but I'm getting get that, that there's a fire we're going to get to. Can we ask now, is, is Rome, Georgia, a Tartarian? Was it originally a Tartarian town? I would we know so there was a lot of Tartarian buildings there. Yeah, and we know there's a little area downtown where, like, all the churches are. Can we talk about the church that I grew up in, the Presbyterian church? What were your feelings off of that Presbyterian church? Oh, my church? God, that was creepy as all. Like, disgusting, like, isn't it? There was, Just like, what, four or five churches on that one property of land, like, and I, I said, oh, this is a ley line because there's so yeah. many churches Methodist, right there. Baptist, yeah. Episcopalian, the Jewish the temple. church, though, the Presbyterian, or what, was that where you grew up, the Presbyterian? That one was oh, the Lord. weirdest looking one out of, like, I got heebie-jeebies when we, we didn't go inside of it, but just on the outside, just driving by it. I was like, shit, this is creepy as all hell. Creepy AF. And I'm sorry, guys, if you go to that church, look around you. So much symbolism. So yeah, there was much. a lot of symbolism. Like, I mean, that it is was clearly. Let's ask. 
the Presby the first Presbyterian Church of Rome, Georgia that I grew up with and up and was baptized in, allegedly for entertainment purposes only, is it satanic? Do they do satanic rituals there? Yep, they sure do. I mean, that's clearly they passionately do satanic rituals there. Also, I don't know why I'm laughing. Also, that. tells me that there's there's hoo boo of the dark side going on there. I knew it. <laughs> oh, I knew and, it. And it's all bloodline related. It's all like this is family. This is like getting together with your family and friends kind of energy. And this is like trying to change something. Let me ask, did they know when I was a child, did they know I could see them? Did the powers that be just just because just to validate things that I experienced, did the powers that be at that church know that I could see them for who they really were? Yeah. Ace of Swords with the magician. Oh yeah. All right. Okay. So the story of the cemetery, as they say, that what they tell us. All right. So before it was a cemetery in 1793, this was the site of a battle called the Battle of Hightower. Some general, John Xavier, I don't know if that's how you say his last name. Anyway, led 800 men down from Knoxville. They were chasing about a thousand Cherokees who had allegedly scalped and um, killed 13 settlers in the Knoxville area. Uh, the Cherokee used Myrtle Hill, Hill as a defense position. The Cherokee lost the battle and Sevier burned down the village that was there. This is the first fire we're going to talk about. So this is why I was going to ask, I don't know if I asked if this was a Tartarian town, which we'll ask at some point later on, because there are two fires we're looking at here. So first of all, let's ask, is that story true? Did, I, I don't doubt that this guy came down from Knoxville with men to chase down the Cherokee, but I don't think it's true that they were chasing them down because they scalped and killed 13 people. I think they were chasing them down because it has something to do with the priest and priestess of Isis. And I do think the Cherokee had something to do with the Essenes, but I just want to see what the cards have to say is, is this story true that they told us? There is a plaque at Myrtle Hill honoring the guy who burned down the village, of course, honoring him. It's a monument to honor Sevier. I don't know if I'm saying his last name right. I do have that there is some truth in it, but not all of it. So it's like they took, because they do have the Ace of Pentacles asking the question if it's true. However, um, <coughs> some things were definitely changed with these three cards. And then we have the Four of Swords, which is like they, they've removed a lot of stuff out of the actual story. Um, but it kind of needed to happen that way because um, I feel like intuitively... It's like a lot of us, like, if you think about it, a lot of light workers or star seeds, we've been cloaked this whole time, right? A lot of us have been cloaked. That includes a lot of people in the audience. They've been cloaked. So it's, it was, you know, what the devil makes for bad, God makes for good. So I think if we knew the actual story, it might make certain people targets, if that makes any sense. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Well, let's ask about the Cherokee. Were the Cherokee connected to the Essenes? And the priest and priestess of Isis, given our episode on uh, Norse now. They were either connected or worked with. So this is like working with something. Um, definitely, like, we're not told the full truth about the Cherokee. That's a definite. Um, and there was payment made to switch up the story. Um, but at the same time, we have the Nine of Pentacles with the Queen of Swords. So there is a lot of truth in the fact that they are connected. There's some sort of connection, whether it's lineage or occupational connection. Does it make sense? Were they protectors of the Essenes? Were they supposed to protect 
until the end of Tartaria or whatever. That's interesting. Cherokee are major warriors. Yeah. Yeah, I believe so. So we have the moon card. So um, this is this could be like hidden information coming up. Or this could say they discreetly protected them. But we have the judgment, the two of uh, swords, which is blocking of um, judgment, you know, or death, uh, the death card. So literally they did block these two are next to the two of swords. So when we get that, I would say they were blocking them from judgment and death. So I'm getting that they did protect them. But maybe right. not necessarily out in the open, like, they discreetly protected, or that moon card could just say that this is now coming to, to, to the surface as information. So when they were run out of Knoxville by this general and his 800 <laughs> men for allegedly scalping these people, um, were, they, is the real, were they really running them out of Knoxville to get them away from that ISIS temple at Norris Dam? Did it have, some, did it have something to do with that ISIS temple that's there near Knoxville, basically within the Knoxville area. I have a big fan growing, growing, <laughs> going, and it's blowing my cards everywhere. <laughs> um, I'm not getting a true answer here. I hate to say it, but they don't want us to know. I just feel like there's a lot more that we're missing, a lot of information that we're not, we don't even, we can't even get our hands on right now. Because when I get, like, when I get a whole spread that makes no sense at all, I'm just, I'm, I just have to go based off of my intuition. And what I feel like is that there could be some truth in that statement, but again, there's more stuff that we just do not know. So let's just ask, are the Cherokee connected to Norris Dam or the Isis Temple or whatever is underneath Norris Dam? Are they connected to it, to whatever secret? Are the Cherokees connected to the secret that's in Norris Dam? Yeah. Ace of Cups. I just pulled Ace of Cups, too. No way. Did you? Well, that's... I, and I, telling, I, I know we don't have all the answers. I know that because where are we going to get all the answers? We're working with what we got. Um, I just have a feeling that there's some connection to this general running them out of the area. If they were protectors of the Essenes and that temple is there and this general ran them out of the area, I just have a feeling that there's some connection there. Now let's ask, is this John Xavier? I don't know if I'm saying his last name right. This general... Um, that ran the Cherokees out of the area, was he part of the club? With these two cards, yeah. Right. So my suspicion, my intuition is telling me there's a connection there, but we will leave it at that for now because we don't know. But I will say if you're in Rome and you go to Myrtle Hill, there's a nice little statue honoring this controller, this club member who tried to annihilate the Cherokee and burn down their village. When he burned down the village, let's ask this question. When he burned down the village around Myrtle Hill, where there was a Cherokee holding, was he trying to get rid of some Tartaria stuff or some Essene stuff? Just pull the Ace of Cups. Yeah. We have the Ace of Cups again. We definitely tried to. I pulled the Ace of Cups again, too. I just. King I pulled the Ace of Cups. with the World Card. Yep. Five of Cups. That would say, yeah. Yep. That's what I thought. So that's the first fire. That's the first one, guys. And there's a beautiful monument to honor the destruction of our true history, just like at Norris Dam. Cute, cute controllers. Cute. I see you. I see you, controllers. All right. So now there's a story that says in 1829, gold was discovered in De Dahlonega, Georgia, which is actually a little north, directly north of Atlanta. Rome's northwest of Atlanta. But this brought, quote unquote, brought the Europeans who were hanging out over on the coast allegedly into North Georgia for this gold rush. This is also, frankly, during the Trail of Tear times. That was from 1830 to 1838. I do this loosely because I'm not even going to ask about the Trail of Tears because I think there's so much missing information as to what that really was that I don't even think we have grounding to really even ask questions yet. I don't think it is what they told us it was, though. But this is the question I want to ask. If we're looking at the concept of incubator babies, 
is the story they told us about white people coming into the western part of the state into Rome, because this is when Rome started to be now populated with white people, because of a gold rush or because of incubator babies? Let's just ask, is this, were white people already in the area before 1829? Let's ask it that way. Sorry, I keep yawning. <laughs> okay, you're channeling. Two hours on Dark Outpost today, guys. Two hours. Every Tuesday. Show us, show us wipe you out. Yeah, we're, this is going to air on Friday, but we are filming this on Tuesday, um, guys. So that's why, yeah, two hours every Tuesday, mm -hmm. Dark Outpost. We had a fun time. That was a good show. Yeah, it was actually a good show. And while she's drawing, I'll take this time to notify you guys, too. So if you want to catch us on the Dark Outpost, I'm usually there on Tuesdays from 11 to 1 p.m. Eastern Time. Stephanie's there on Thursdays, either 10 or 11 Eastern Time. If you're not a part of Dark Outpost TV, you can catch the episodes live on David Zublik's Twitter page, which I will put a link to his Twitter page down in the description box below. So you don't need a membership membership to see it live in the moment. Um, but if you have to watch it later, you will have to, he got kicked off of YouTube a long time ago. So, um, so he has his own TV programming now. So I have four of pentacles with the four of swords, which is telling me they were already there. This is like, this means rest. So what I'm gathering is like, they already had a place to call their home. <coughs> this is holding on to something. So to me, that would just say they already were there. Um, and I mean, there were some people who, who came in, but they were, they were brought there on bad terms, meaning they were confiscated and taken stealing there. Gold. They were stealing gold. Were they stealing okay. gold? For the ball? So that's what this actually could be then too. Um, But I'm also getting that there were people that were G R A F F I C E D. Oh, sure. Oh, sure. Yes, yes, yes. So this is what I got in my head. So we know about incubator babies. So after the mud flood came through um, and knocked a bunch of people out, the allegedly the controllers then when they were released from the gates of hell took DNA from the bodies they found to then in a lab create more bodies. And so when I saw that four of swords, that's what I kind of saw is that people were kind of created in place there, like the incubator babies. So that's kind of how I saw it in my head. I know that sounds wild guys. If this is your first time hearing this, um, ta-da, like <laughs> the story's wild guys. <laughs> the truth is far stranger than fiction. Our ancestors didn't come over here on no boat. Let me just put it that way. All right, so let's move on then. So the city of Rome was founded in 1834, um, which we've already kind of talked about. There's some weird stuff around that, so I'm just going to leave that where it is. Oak Hill Cemetery opened in 1837 because, of course, of course, of course, what they tell us, we build a town, all of a sudden we need a place to put the dead. Bring out your dead, right? Like, we got to put the dead somewhere. Now, let's verify with the cards. Before Gog and Magog, before the start of Gog and Magog, Gog and Magog did... Did we bury our dead? Did our ancestors bury their dead? Or did we cremate them? I'm going to have to ask this more specifically. So give me a sec. Can I'm going to ask, ask, I'm going to ask if our ancestors only cremated. Or is the burial of dead people a nefarious ritual? Okay, let's ask that then. That's where I'm going with this. I think you know why I asked that question. Real. The burial of bodies, is that a nefarious satanic ritual? Yeah. Doesn't allow the soul to release itself. Yep. So we've talked about it, this before. Uh, it's putting the soul in limbo. In limbo. That's where you get earthbound spirits, I think. Yep. Okay, so guys, we talked about this with the Rosalia Lombardo case in Sicily a long time ago we did where we figured out that they want us to bury our dead because fragments of the soul, soul will stay in the in the body and then they can harness those bodies, okay? So let's skip ahead a little bit. We're gonna talk more about the founding of, of Myrtle Hill, but we know that there are a lot of 
we know that obelisks are used to generate energy, right? We've talked about this a lot, a lot, a lot of recent. It's not a wiener, okay? It's not a wiener. It's not, it's not, all right? It's just not, although it's quite funny. I just funny. think that word is funny, like a little kid. <laughs> you see a bunch of erect wieners around the world? You just said wiener. <laughs> I mean, tee hee hee. But we know that the darkness mimics the uh, light. So do they put, there's a ton of, we got there were like, what, 666 obelisks? Yeah, I, so. I was just calculating on my board. I don't, my ego could have gotten on that. Also, but I'm going to put all the videos at the end, guys, of us there. There's a lot of fucking, well, there's six terraces, six terraces. There's I a think. lot of obelisks. There's, they, yeah. they go from very, very tiny to very, very big. That's what all. She said. Just like all the boys in my Rolodex. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I oh, so we out talked of there. about that before. We both have experiences. We've chatted about offline before. Girls talk. Girls talk. Um, so are they, did they put, do they put these little obelisks in these cemeteries? Not just Myrtle Hill, not just Oakland, because the controllers are trying to harness energy from the dead. Is it a power source for the deep controllers for the club? It's because the club has small dick energy, so they're trying to have big dick energy by harnessing. It's kind of like <laughs> when you see those those big giant pickup trucks, like an F three fifty diesel. And it's got the big hanging testicles hanging off the back of it. You know what my son says to that? My son goes, oh, he must have a little wiener. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's Napoleon complex. Go for yeah. it. I'm, like, I'm like, kid, where did you get that from? He goes, I don't know. I just figured. Yeah, I know. It's called the Napoleon complex because Napoleon apparently had a, <laughs> a dessert, a, 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 you know, like put your alphaness out there. Listen, if it's too big, it's not fun. If it's too I'm small. I'm going to get a bunch of people commenting. How could you teach your son that? Listen, you don't know my son. Then first of all, he might be a kid, but he's a really old soul. So there's no hiding shit from him. Okay. He's just one of those kids. He picks, doesn't he pick up on things like that? Yeah. But that's a literal thing. People will say, oh, that person, if they have a big old truck, a big old whatever. Oh, they must have Napoleon complex. Meaning that they've got a, a little, little link, winky dink. But they've got a complicated. I would hate to be a man. Like, I'm sorry, guys. Listen, if it's too big, it's painful. So listen, testicles are bad enough hanging dangling off your chest. Never mind so something. Your I don't know why. Every every how do you person, run, men, how do you run with who? <laughs> it's like it's like an air freshener hanging from a car that smells like perpetual Cheerios. I mean. <laughs> what is wrong with us oh yeah everything okay going forward okay so i, I mean are they are they do they have small dick energy and they're trying to harness energy from the dead from a little obelisk on these graveyards yes we're making fun of you controllers because it's quite pathetic <laughs> well i mean the king of wands could say harnessing energy <laughs> he got a wand I think that spirit trying to make him funny right now. The king, the king of wands. But you're the queen of pentacles. She's like, come hither, baby. Well, I mean, what does David call these? Your chesticles? Yeah, chesticles. Yeah. Yeah, chesticles. I'd like to say I made it up, but I didn't. The queen of pentacles is like, come see my chesticles. Yeah, there you go. So, I mean, this could be energy, too. We have the high priestess. So, I'm going to say yes with the high priestess. Um, <clears throat> in the justice card, it's like, that's an energy balancer. So, we're kind of talking about balancing the, the, the little dick energy. I mean, I'm not getting a 100% yes in this spread. But I'm going to go on a hunch and say there is a good chance. Because I don't think burying your dead is a good thing. I think we no. should be needed to be honest i've with always you. intuitively known not to bury like i don't want to be don't leave me to sit in the i mean well, i, I guess have some more clarification 
Oh yeah, it's being. I got so I got this, but I also got a black. The it like black some sort. In other words, it's blocking the soul from going back up to the light. Okay. So we get we get okay. Does this is this what keeps us stuck in the karmic cycle on Earth? Because our parts of our soul, and I think that's, and I know we asked this in another video, so I won't ask it again, but we found out that's part of what getting your life body is, is when all the bodies are going to be released and all, all the fragments of our souls are going to come back to us. But is this what is keeping us incarnating on earth for these last 200 years about because we had Tartaria before this? So. Oh yeah. I just pulled the hangman. That was a, yeah. I love these cards, guys. Both seven are using the Gilded Tarot cards. Um, if I remember correctly, I, if I remember, I will put a link to these cards in the description box below. Stephanie got me hooked to these cards. These cards are so easy to channel with. They're Tomorrow so wants them now, too. I know Tomorrow's going to get them. They're so beautiful and so amazing, these cards. So yeah. I'm getting a yes to the question, by the way. So our souls are, are feeling empty, dissatisfied, right? And the four of pentacles is hanging onto something. So, yep, this would be, we do have fractal or fragments of our souls hanging on to this earth. So we, but, but we're anxiously waiting to have five of, five of swords is like done with the old, out with the new. So... And then I have the justice card. So balancing out back everything. Okay. So that answers a lot of questions. So, all right. So again, the Oak Hill Cemetery was the first cemetery open in 1837 for the controllers to have a place to harness their small dick energy. Um, and then they needed a second location in 1850. Oh, yeah, we're at a little, little, little singing. We're so, we're so grown up, Bryce. We're so grown up. Instead of the snake in the grass, it's like a snail in the grass. So, sorry, controllers. Sucks to be you. Sorry. <laughs> um, anyway, all right. 1850, a, a hill near the rivers, the three rivers of Rome, which we did do a little readings on the rivers, which I will put up later on a separate video. Um, was picked. This uh, hill was originally owned by Colonel Alfred Shorter, who is named Shorter College in Rome is named after Alfred. Shorter College is extremely religious, as is Barry. They're Christian colleges. We know what that means. You saw our Barry stuff. You understand what we're saying. And someone else named Cunningham Pennington. Now, Cunningham Pennington was a civil engineer, which, what was he engineering without power tools? Anyway, he designed the Myrtle Hill to be in six different levels, so six different terraces, and there was going to be roads. At that point, it was for a horse and buggy because, you know, no power tools. But yet they want us to believe they built all these buildings, but yet they couldn't pave a fucking road. Oh, yeah, right. Okay. All right, controllers. Sure. All right. Um, and he made it to look like a wedding cake. Do you have a question? Do <laughs> you have a yes. question? I'm just giving like the background. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just like, when you read this stuff out loud, it's like, we're such idiots if we actually believed this shit. Like, I'm just how, picking on you. I'm huh? just picking, I'm just picking on I'm you. Like, how idiotic, how idiotic are we? Rome History Museum, wake up. This is idiotic. <laughs> I think a four-year-old would be like, yeah, right. Like, a civil engineer, they didn't even have a fucking chainsaw. Like, what are they engineering? <laughs> they couldn't even get mud off of their fucking boots. Come on. All right. So let's 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 actually read on um, Cunningham Pennington, who designed Myrtle Hill. Was Myrtle Hill already designed that way because it was Tartarian? You saw all the terraces. It's beautiful. It's the cemetery I've ever been now. It, but it's beautiful. It's it, it, there is a prettiness to it, but it's definitely like what? Like why did they do this? If it's just going to be like a hill of dead people, wouldn't you just put graves there? And not worry about like was cunning was. Let's just ask: Was Myrtle Hill a Tartarian hill? Was it already that designed that way? Is the is the Cunningham Pen uh, 
Cunningham Pennington, that's quite a name. Cunningham Pennington is that story bullshit, basically. So what, what question do you find? You just asked two. Is, is the Cunningham Pennington civil engineer of Myrtle Hill story true? Or is it bullshit? I pulled this when I asked if it's bullshit, the sun guard came out. <laughs> Which is a yes, guys, according to the sun card. But yes, it's bullshit. And, and then the ace of pentacles. It's bullshit. It's it's bullshit. bullshit. I mean, there's there's a little bit of truth in it because I do have the king of swords and he's positively aspected, but um, <clears throat> with the queen of wands and the page of wands, but those in control with the king of pentacles twisted it with the wheel of fortune and manipulated it with the seven of swords. So I have a feeling that Cunningham Pennington was probably a real person. But let's ask this. As the devil card pulled out, I was thinking this question, and that pulled the devil card out. Um, was Myrtle Hill already designed the way that it was designed for Tartaria? Was it a Tartarian building? Or not building, but landmass, we'll say. Was it designed that way for a specific reason for Tartaria? No, I think it was designed to hit hide things. Oh, so that's why the devil card. Yeah. Out. Yeah, no, it was designed to hide things that were already there. See, we have the we have the emperor, which is like a control that could be a controller, okay? To block things that were there. So that hill has something under it. The devil. I pulled the devil card too as I dropped it and the king of wands came out. Um, so is the hill the result of a mud flood? Is it a natural hill or is it a mud flood hill? If it's hiding something. Oh, is it hiding a pyramid? Can't scratch the question with a mud flood. Is it hiding a fucking pyramid? Hello, Egypt. Kid you not. I kid you not. I kid you not. They hit a fucking pyramid. God, the, the church ladies of Rome are not going to be happy about this. I'm just telling you guys, they are not going to be happy about this. Oh, crap. Sorry. I just, that cart went flying. I got to move my over here could be a pyramid definitely praise the set of Isis something it was a temple I'm getting that's kind of what I'm yeah Just gonna the queen of swords with the death with the lovers with the chariot with the three of cups and I got the hit as I was getting these cards I had to do with the praise the set of Isis which that'll get into our next video from Rome, which is the high tower, um, the clock tower. So are they, are the bad guys in Rome still utilizing the inside of Myrtle Hill for their cere their ceremonies? Their uh, forced tango, we'll say. Their forced front hug, we'll say. The forced kind. Dirtying up that temple that should be holy. Not anymore. They were. We have a tower card with the victory, with the hermit, with the six of cups. No, it's, it's, I don't think they're, I, I don't think they can't harness anything anymore. I think that maybe, I don't want to put words in Mr. T's mouth here or give out false information at all because that's I'm just divinating. So Mr. T, if you're watching and this is completely wrong, I do apologize, but that might be why he came to Rome in the first place for the that. party. I was going to ask that. Were there arrests? Oh, yeah. We have the tower card. He, something was brought down so that they can. Was there? Okay, let's ask it this way then. If that was an ISIS temple, and we'll get later into the clock tower because we got more there as well regarding this, which, well, that'll be another episode. Um, when Trump went there, was that a huge holding was Rome at that time before 
Mr. T came through it. Was that a huge holding for the controllers? For the Lucys, as um, Shanti calls them, the Luciferians, the Lucys. Was Rome a huge clubhouse, we'll say, for the club? Did you not? You and your ace of cups. I think I need to make a t-shirt that says that's an ace of cups moment. Definitely could have been. I have the tower with the hanged man card. So tower with the hanged man, um, which is a holding to do not such good stuff. Um, but it's it's not anymore because of the justice card. So was can we ask for their arrest made when Mr. T came to have the party at the airport in Rome before the November competition of 2020? Were there arrests made or forfeits capitulation made? Ace of Swords, so yes to the death card. Um, yeah, they were snuck away. It was not done in plain sight. It was done out of plain sight. And it was for our greatest and highest good. <coughs> I kind of want to cry right now. It's just so much is being validated for me. You guys have no idea how much this is validating for me. And I, I really hope that anybody watching right now. World card. Yeah, I just hope that anybody watching right now that grew up like I did and you had the same experiences, I hope this brings you validation. I was going to ask about the Civil War, but I don't even think I need to because I think it's all redundant. We know why they burnt down stuff. We know. Let's just ask a few more questions before we close out this episode. And then after this, guys, I'm going to air all the videos at the end of this for that, what, that Stephanie and I did more divination on Myrtle Hill and all that kind of stuff. But um, let's ask, was from Georgia before the mud flood? Was it a Tartarian building or town? Was it a good Tartarian town just like DC? Well, Six of Cups with the Six of Wands would tell me, yes, generations of peace. <laughs> but that's telling me. Um, and I feel like it's actually going to go back to that with this card that's coming out of Troubled Waters. But yeah, they're, they, Something happened in the meantime, the hangs man, we have the four of cups, which is disappointment. Um, that could be regret, that could be sadness, with the seven of wands, which is fighting, quarreling, bat. It's just it's just it's it's a very argumentative card. So that's telling me that it went to a state of disarray. And it was from people of you know, this Six of Pentacles is like you reap what you sow kind of a thing. Um, paying somebody off or that sort of stuff. Yeah, that's kind of, can I, I'm going to ask two now, mainly because I just finished reading Quan Yen and we're going to be covering that next week on Sophia Code. The three rivers in Rome. Did the three rivers there, we know they told us they had to do with highways and that's how people travel. That's why it was valuable. Um, but were the, was the water there used for healing? Were the rivers used as part of a healing modality for Tartaria? So what was that? Rivers. I couldn't hear you. The three rivers in Rome, the Etowa, the Cusa, the Ustinala, the rivers that Myrtle Hill overlooks. If that's a temple, it's right there where those three rivers meet. Were those rivers used during Tartaria as an orb went by? Were those rivers used for healing during Tartaria? The reason why I'm asking this, guys, is because the three rivers, the Etowa, the Cusa, the Ustinala, um, allegedly that's why Sherman came through and they, the union wanted Rome as a stronghold because of the rivers, but I'm not even going to ask about that because we know that's all bullshit anyway. Um, I think the rivers though, and my gut is telling me if this was a Tartarian town, the rivers were possibly used for water healing. Water is a huge part of healing when it comes to Tartaria. Well, we can look at it that way. <clears throat> Nine of cups is like something you wish for. So um, oftentimes we wish to have good health, but it was bringing in, that's like a love offering. So that could be definitely classified as healing. Um, and I have the Wheel of Fortune card. So yeah, I'm getting um, an energy that it could have been used for healing. It's not a straight out yes or no. Um, let me pull a couple more clarifying cards here. 
Yeah, three of cups. I would say that's like that celebration. Um, oh, with the nine of pentacles, that could definitely be classified as like a healing type of energy. Um, then I get the ace of swords. All right, guys, we're going to leave it there. I kind of want to leave it on a positive note because as we've been saying this week, we're not, I'm not out to destroy Rome. I do express my grievances of growing up there, but part of me wants to validate anybody else if they have those feelings. And if you lived in another town and you had those same feelings, you're probably not crazy. You could be just kidding. You probably aren't though. And um, everything Sometimes we are crazy, but it's a fun, crazy fun kind of one. Um, but I do think that there's healing going on. And I think things will be restored back to their rightful place. And um, Stephanie, I'm going to do this to you kind of on the spot. Uh, if you don't want to do this, I'll cut this off at the end. But I want to extend, you know, part of this whole journey for me really has been Stephanie and I keep telling you guys, we're literally just two human beings. We're two women here in this journey with all of you guys. And I am very fortunate that my platform has gotten big and I'm so incredibly humbled by the opportunity that you guys have afforded me to be able to share my research with you guys, to have a community with you guys. And so I'm going to put an offer out. If um, anybody watching right now, let's extend it to three people because I know Stephanie and I are crazy busy. So I don't want to overextend because I want to make sure that we can do this. I'm going to extend the offer to three people. If you have a town whether that be in the United States or whatever country you're from, I do request that you be able to speak fluent English because unless you speak Sanskrit or redneck, I'm not going to be able to understand you. So, um, so, and redneck still, I have a lot, sometimes I need some subtitles, but um, um, if you have a, a hometown that you want us to, to present, or if you want the opportunity to come on the channel yourself, and present your research on this on your town and have Stephanie and I'll draw cards too. If you want Stephanie and I draw cards and then air it on esoteric Atlanta. Um, I'm going to draw names for this. So if this is something you're interested in, Stephanie, would that be something you'd be cool with? Yeah, actually, I'm not going to say the name of the person. But I did have a reading on somebody who was in Syracuse and all of her questions revolved around her town. And we got some interesting stuff. So if you're watching so and so out there, you okay. might be a good candidate for that. So um, since she already has her research done and you've already met her because there is going to, I'm going to have to go through uh, processing with you guys to just make sure. I mean, 99.9% .9 of everybody watching is cool AF, but I know there's like a 0.01% that could be scammers. So I'm going to have to like talk to the, to you guys, the ones I draw to make sure and look at your research and make sure that the town isn't made up, you know, um, that it's a real place. So I saw or went by, but the girl from Syracuse or guy from Syracuse, however you read for, if you're watching right now, I know Stephanie is going to air this on her channel too. Go ahead and contact Stephanie and we'll do you first. That sounded bad. We're not going to actually do you. <laughs> it's a good thing. It's not a guy. <laughs> oh, actually probably better if it was a guy because i only stephanie and I are, are only interested in the wants okay, no what i no, what i'm saying is a guy could take that completely out of context okay i'm not i'm not talking let's be very clear though stephanie and i only want the obelisk i'm not interested in what i actually have i already have that i don't need another one so i like the opposite i am stephanie stephanie she likes the plug with the outlet okay okay yes, yes. <laughs> i want the divine masculine for my divine feminine i don't want listen <laughs> stephanie's the same we're very very heterosexual we're extremely <laughs> straight all right <laughs> straight. all right so oh anyway but if the, if the person from Syracuse is watching, please go ahead and contact Stephanie. And if you want to, I, I would like for you to present your own research. I am very I'm so much about. I'm fun. I'm fun. There's a stand up comedian out there, uh, Leanne Morgan. She's from the South. She's so funny. But she talked, she went to the University of Tennessee at Knoxville. And she talks about her husband, how her husband finished in four years, but she finished in five because she's fun. And I was like, girl, same, girl, same. I'm fun. I'm fun. Stephanie's fun. Oh, yeah, too. you're fun. You're a special kind of fun, Bryce. Special kind oh, of fun. Me. Um, She's anyway, the one, if you give her a beer, she's trying to zoom in on a tarot card. What was it? It was 
It was the high priest. She got a banging body. I just want to I, listen. I noticed all the time. I noticed. I was like, she kind of looks like me, and she had a little ribbage there. My rib shell. I was like, I have a tattoo there. Let's see if she has. She has a banging body. I mean, Stephanie's got a banging body. As a straight woman, I can say when a woman has a banging body. I think my body's pretty banging. I work hard on my body. I work really fucking hard on my body. I have a very short and stubby body. I don't know where the banging comes in. But <laughs> you got a cute figure. You got a really cute figure. Anyway, I digress. But for the lady from Syracuse, if you're watching, you already have your research presented. Stephanie's already worked with it, so I trust it. So if you would like to come on and present your research... I would love to offer you that opportunity for other pe three other people. If, if that's something you want, if you have a YouTube channel or if you just want to have a chance to present your questions, um, put a one in the comment section and then let's give it like, um, let me look at the date. Let's see. This video is airing on Friday the 15th. So let's give it two weeks. Um, so Friday the 29th. I'm going to leave myself a note with all the people in this video who have left a one or a pinlet, but I have it marked here for all the people that have put a one down in the comment section. I will draw your names and we will pick three people to first. You'll have a phone call with me to look at your information and then we'll schedule a time for you to present the history of your town and then pick you. You get to pick the questions, not me. It's you hosting. You'll be guest presenting. You'll be guest hosting on this channel. I'll be there. And then Stephanie will be there. And then we'll divinate on it and see what we can find out. All right. So anyway, if that's something you're interested in, put a one in the comment section below. And um, it's only going to be an episode about towns, though. All right. Doesn't matter where in the world you live. Towns. And you need to be able to speak fluent English to do that. Because unfortunately, I wish I spoke more languages, but I don't. So um, anyway. All right. Hope that's, I hope, I hope, I hope I can extend it forward to you guys. I am all about paying it forward. I think we all should be paying it forward. We all are just walking each other home and we're having fun doing it. So anyway, all right, stay tuned. The next section is going to be Stephanie and myself divinating at Myrtle Hill in Rome, Georgia. All right, we'll talk. Okay, so it's a little after nine o'clock in the morning on Wednesday, June 22nd. And we're gonna start today off at the bottom of Myrtle Hill at my grandparents, my mom's parents' burial. We might actually go by my dad's parents' burial at some point too, since my dad's parents have been a little bit more vocal in channelings. And so this is my, the Bryce's. My, I, I think you guys know, I've said this before, my first name is my mother's maiden name. Very big thing to do down here in the South. So my grandfather was Boyce Stafford Bryce. My grandmother was Maxine Strong Bryce. Um, yeah, my grandmother's first cousin is the late Strom Thurmond, which we know he's bad. He was the longest running senator in the United States. We know he was definitely part of the club, but she was a Strom. So anyway, uh, sorry it's loud. They're doing yard work out here, but we thought we'd stop at my grandparents' grave. Uh, just to see if they had any messages for us before we, uh, before Where we... Do you want me to channel first? Let's, let's channel Maxine, my grandmother Maxine. I think my grandfather is kind of in the in-between right now. I think he might not be fully in spirit anymore. Oh yeah, she's like wanting to talk. Look at that, yes. Wow. Okay, Maxine, do you, what do you like to say to Bryce and I? So this is the dousing board, guys. We've got our tarot cards as well, but Stephanie's a really good dowser. So my grandmother was only 61 when she died, and my grandfather was about to turn 57. They were both really, really young when they died, both of cancer. As you can see, my granddad's got the little medical thing that's maybe not that great, but. Oh, she's funny. My grandmama? She's saying it's hot in here. It's hot in here. <laughs> okay. Yeah, are part of their souls still trapped in here? Is that, are they being harnessed? Maxine, is, how, is part of your soul still trapped in this graveyard? Is it being harnessed by the obelisk? 
Yeah. Yeah, how do we, is there something we can do to break that? Are is we doing? Is there something we can do to break that? She's saying don't. Don't do anything? No. Is she worried about me? Worried about us? Are you worried about Bryce and I? Yes. Why? Energy? Is oh, because we our, our energy gets stifened. Is it because our energy gets stifened? Yeah. So yeah, when we were here yesterday, we got really, really tired afterwards to the point where I was like, okay, I'm done. <laughs> Can my grandmother validate when I was a child, grandmama, when I was a child here growing up, were entities beating off of me? Yeah. Did you, did you know that grandmama when you were alive or do you only know that now that you're dead? Did you know that when you were alive? No. Do you know that now? Yeah. Well, she said so, so. Yeah. So am I, is that because I'm different? Is it, is there something about me that spirits see? And Stephanie too? <coughs> yeah. Is it because I'm the sensitive or I'm a medium or? Yeah. What, Grandmama, what would, uh, what would the spirit world call Stephanie and me? Are we mediums? Are we? Yeah. What does the spirit world call us? She's spelling out medium. Medium. Is anybody else in, are any of your other grandchildren mediums? Any of your other grandchildren mediums? No. Just me? Just Bryce? Yeah. Was I, was I abused here in Rome, Grandmama? Spirit, would, did spirits abuse me? The spirits abused Bryce when she was in a Rome? child in Rome? Yeah. Was my childhood considered <coughs> traumatic here because of it? Yeah. Will my mother ever apologize? Yeah. Does my mother, your daughter, totally understand what happened to me here? No. Is she stubborn and just doesn't want to understand what happened? Yeah. Which I could tell already from interaction. Yeah. She tries to deflect. Yeah. It's, I think it's too much right now for her. To realize to how much I was abused here? Yeah. When, Grandmama, when I, um, whenever I have to come back to Rome, I often get a lot of anxiety. Am I safer in Rome now that I know? How do I word that? Saying yeah. Do you want your, do you, when this is said and done, Grandmama, do you want you and Granddaddy exhumed and, um, um, what is it called? Burned? What's, uh. Cremated? Cremated. Do you want your bodies, do you want us to exhume your bodies and cremate your bodies when all of this is done? No. No. You want to stay here? Yeah. Are what? you, is your vibrational frequency helping in this place? Yeah. So even when this is over, when we've, when we've ascended, you don't want it, your bodies cremated so you can be free? No. No. Will, will the ascension free you on its own? Yeah. Okay. Is Granddaddy with you, or is he in a place right now where he's about to come back into human form? Is he? Is he here? Is Bubby here? Granddaddy Bubby? No. Has he already come into this world again? Yes. So you're by yourself here. Yes. Do you like being by yourself, or do you want? She likes it. She likes her alone time. <laughs> I mean, she's in the spirit world too, so yeah. I'm sure, you know. Do you have Do you have ghost parties out here at night, Grandmama? No. No. Do you have friends in the spirit realm? Yes. Perfect. All right, Grandmama. Well, I, I love you, Grandma. I'm 39 now. You've been Hold gone. On, she's spelling. Oh.
She's saying I love you too. Um, do you do you know you have three grand, great grandchildren? Yeah. Do you know that your youngest great granddaughter May was named after you? Yep. What do you think about your great grandchildren? She's saying beautiful. Yep, she's saying beautiful. Aw. Well, Charlie, your great grandson, he asked me a lot of questions because he likes history. I don't have any grandbabies, or I don't have any babies yet, Grandmama. Am I gonna have? Are you gonna have great grandchildren through me one day? Because we're living longer. Yeah. Do you want to know how many? How many am I gonna have, Grandmama? I think I know. Two. Two. Is it gonna be a, a girl and then a boy? Yeah. Are you hanging out with them in spirit world right now while they wait to come through? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Awesome, Grandmama. I love you, Grandmama. I'm, I'm old now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We're going to go up the hill, Grandmama. Will you, will you come with us and protect us? Can we invite you to come with us and protect us while we do this work? Yep. All right. So, Grandmama, you want to get the Nissan with me as we drive up to the top of Myrtle Hill, or you just want to meet us up there? I don't know how fast spirits can get up the hill. She's gonna meet us. All right, we'll meet you at the top of the hill, Grandmama. All right, guys, so we, again, we're at the top of the hill right now. We actually came down a little ways. We're parked up at the very top. And um, first, we're just gonna check and make sure that my grandmother is here with us because I feel like, she, my grandmother was actually seemed pretty concerned. My pendulum is gone. Do you wanna go, is it at the grave? No, it's in the car, probably. I'll just pull cards. Okay. I was like, if my grandmother stole that damn pendulum. <laughs> actually, your, your car keys. Give me your car keys. You know what? It actually will probably work better anyways. I could just use this. Okay. Is Maxine here with us? Maxine, what? Uh, Maxine Bryce. My grandmother, Maxine. Yep. Are you protecting us, Grandma? My grandmother seemed pretty concerned about us trying to do this. I think she was very concerned about us being abused by malevolent forces but you know what I've been abused by malevolent forces both in body and out of body my whole life so nothing new here I think Stephanie's been the same so you know what I can just use can I take the, yeah. the key off because I'll get a more precise answer yeah take that um evil eye thing off I actually got that evil eye thing on my car keys um as an amulet for when uh when the black magic That's started really cool yeah so it's in my car yeah so take take that you black witches mask <coughs> prepared now all right so maxine is with us what do we want to ask are we safe right now are you protecting us from any dark forces yep so grandmama are we're gonna pull cards on this too but are they are the powers that be the, the controllers the dark controllers which i know you probably didn't know a whole lot about when you were alive even though your cousin is the late strom thurman and was part of the cabal, but um, I don't think you knew much about it. But are you fully aware of everything going on in the Earth spirit world? Yep. Are they using Myrtle Hill, are the controllers using Myrtle Hill as a way to harness energy? Yep. Um, is, is Rome, Georgia a deep state town? Is this a very dark town? Yep. Are there a lot of blood sacrifices that happen in Rome, Georgia? Yep. Of the human kind. Yep. Did you know this when you were alive? No. no. Ow, something bit me. It bit my ass. <laughs> Says red fire ants. Probably. All right, Grandmama, so can we just ask how many obelisks are on Myrtle Hill? It keeps pointing to six. We'll go with 600. Is it, is it 666 or just 66? Is it 66? No, 666. So Rome, Georgia is ex extremely important to the cabal. Yep. Grandmama, did, did people try to kill me when I was here? Yeah. How many times was my life in danger living here as a child? Is that four? Four times. Four times. Who saved me? Did you save me from the other side of the veil? Is that why you died early? 
Yes. So you, you died young. Too. Is that why I've seen you around me? Yes. My whole life? Thank you. Am I safe now? Yes. Is Stephanie safe now? Yep. Is there any message you want to tell us on the dousing board before we start pulling cards? Or you want to tell the audience watching right now? I, I think you know your... And, and probably you probably know about my YouTube channel, Grandma, because Spirit, Spirit knows everything, so... Someone is Yeah, it's the ant that's crawling up my shorts. <laughs> oh my god! So, Grandma, we had somebody kind of following us yesterday when we were filming. Our, is there? Does the? I mean, this is gonna sound crazy. But welcome to the Looney Tune Great Ow. Awakening. I know, right? <laughs> this um, is not ass friendly. It's not ass friendly. Um, Grandma, what? Uh, does the cabal have somebody following us? Is the cabal watching us right now? No. Your, no. Who's watching us? Bob. Ah, oh, fuck you, Bob. Yeah, well, I'm not going to say the actual name of the person. But Did she try to spell the real name? Yeah, she tried to spell the Stopped real name. It. Yeah, yeah. Grandma, we got to speak in code, okay? So just say Bob just say when Bob. it comes to her. Is it Bob? Is Bob a lizard? Yes. Is Bob pissed that Stephanie and I are working together right now? Yes. Because Bob it, tried to... Look at this. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck you, Bob. It's kind of petty and pathetic. Will Bob be exposed soon? Will we be vindicated on a on a grander scale? I know it's kind of my, maybe my ego talking, but man, it would sure be nice to have some vindication when it comes to this bird using tarot card reader who's an infiltrator for the cabal. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna be lit. Vindicated. Vindicated. Am I going to get my money back that Bob stole from me? Yeah. Has Bob stolen money from other people I care about? Yeah. Has Bob stolen money from one person in particular that's stuck right now? Yeah. Is he going to get his money back too? Yeah. Good. Good. Stealing is disgusting. Okay. All right, Grandmama. Thank you. You can hang out with us for the rest of the day if you want to, Grandmama. Just don't attach to us so you don't feed off of our energy. But I know you wouldn't do that anyway because you're my grandmother, so. All right. Just spirit. So Stephanie just asked Spirit what we need to know about the cemetery. And we're at, again, we're at a great view because the city of Rome is right there. You can see the clock tower, which we're going to go read as well because um, I think it's an obelisk. So Stephanie just asked what we needed to know about the cemetery. You getting my boobs in that? <laughs> Girl, get those boobs in there. Yeah, you guys don't get to see that on uh, my videos because I'm neck up. <laughs> that's a way to get. That's a way to get some more subscribers. <laughs> oh yeah, that's yep. As I pick a wedge and show my boobs. Oh yeah, good stuff over here. I'm kind of We're getting so classy. I'm getting eaten by fire ants. Okay. I'll have to tell you guys a funny story. We were sitting at the breakfast table this morning and Stephanie was like, I'm sorry, I have to blow my nose. And she looks at me and she goes, but I've seen you pick your nose, so it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I even brought poopery for my trip, okay? <laughs> Nobody wants to smell someone's shit. <laughs> hey, as long as your colon works, that's all that all right. matters. I need to stand up because I'm just like, yeah. Okay, so we have... 
if I can see. <laughs> it's the Page of Cups, yeah, page of Cups. Seven of Swords, and the Six of Cups. <coughs> so there's an offer made to theft. Yeah. It's like, it's like I feel like a lot of people's energy is like, not anything nefarious, like not nefarious people, but like the good people. So like people of the light. Um, people are paying to harness energy, it seems like. But let's expand on that. So can we, can we clarify the page of cups? Okay, two of wands. So blocking. No, two of wands is into the future. That's not the two of swords that blocks. So this is looking at the future, immediate future, right? Yeah. Okay. Get off my cards, ants. Okay. We got, we got Immediate bad future, ants. there's going to be some chaos. Clarify the seven of swords. In the immediate future. Oh, wow. The town's going to be very upset when they find out this hill is not yeah. what they think it is. Because, guys, in, in Rome, Rome is a historical city, so you can come here and do like the same kind of stuff you can do in like Charleston, South Carolina, or like New Orleans or Savannah, where you can take tours. There's a tour of Myrtle Hill you can do with like automated systems where you hear all the stories and stuff. Oh wow. So people in Rome think this is like the bee's knees, but it's not. It's being used for something very bad. Oh, they're gonna have to surrender. Yeah, they're gonna have to surrender. Um, I almost feel like this is saying too that there's actually been maybe sacrifices done up here. Oh, possibly. absolutely. That was one thing I was gonna ask. Absolutely, I think there's been sacrifices done up here. Absolutely. Yeah, they're they're waiting to surrender. Something's waiting to surrender. People. So they're gonna surrender to. Oh, it's like they're waiting to. Oops. They're waiting to um, take in maybe these people that have offered money to harness. So the, okay, guys. Sorry, we had to change locations because the ants were getting awful. So we're using this this thing as a table right now so we were asking so this was the last location that mr t came to do a rally before uh the november shenanigans of 2020 so we know that mr t is very strategic did he come here because this is a cabal holdout the controllers are hardcore harnessing energy here in rome georgia is that why he came here to kind of tell them you best be minding your manners because your ass is about to capitulate to me. We do have judgment. Um, so that's indicating something to me. Um, maybe bringing back the town to its natural state. Do you feel less anxious in Rome this time around? Um, I do, but I think it's because I know now. Like okay. I, I don't feel like I'm crazy. I still, like every time I drive into Rome, my, my anxiety my anxiety gut goes through the roof sometimes about being here. And I never understood why people actually live here. Like, I really just don't understand why people live here. But right. obviously, they don't feel what I feel. They don't see what I see. They're not sensitive to the truth, obviously. So, so something was being worked on. And it looks like it was more on the spiritual level with the King of Wands. Um, and a lot of intuition went into it. That could actually be Trump's spiritual uh, support. Um, was also helping him work on whatever he needed to work on here. Yes, stuff happened very discreetly under the surface. And it does look like that <coughs> there was some sort of death of something and rebirth of something here. And it was for the highest good. And then if we move over to the Nine of Pentacles. Nine of Pentacles is abundance. Um, it's nature bringing something back to its natural state. Can we clarify the Nine of Pentacles, please, Spirit? Okay. Oh, okay. So we have Ten of Cups. So Ten of Cups is all about family, friends, um, happiness, harmony. Um, go away, aunt. And we have the Queen of Swords. So bringing back to its natural state for family, making it more family-oriented, and maybe even incorporating more feminine energy into it because maybe this was solely masculine energy in this town. Yeah. Because I'm getting that, like when I do my videos with Natalie, a lot of it has to revolve around like the pyramids and stuff like that. It revolves around a lot of things that have been harnessed for male energy, but they took out the feminine energy. And so I feel like there's definitely, and the Queen of Swords too, she's very vocal, um, very strategic. 
So I do know Trump is around a lot of feminine like yeah. energy that is very strategic, very, very Warriors. intelligent. Exactly. Let's clarify this judgment card. So we have the world. Clarify judgment. Okay. So, yeah. So he definitely came here. I, I think there was a rest because we do have judgment. And it's got, we have the world card here, so that it's, it's a huge adjustment in the town. It probably will actually take a few years for the energy to start feeling a little bit better, though. Okay. <coughs> the people in the town seem to be fucking oblivious, most yeah, of them. Yeah, exactly. Like, they don't understand how they don't feel this. They're probably just regular people. I mean, you feel it. I feel we it, are... but I think because, I, I think if we, any of our subscribers that are more, like, they, they know mediumship, they are more psychic. Um, I mean, everybody's psychic if if you allow yourself to get to that point. Right. But people who are very, very intensely um, uh, affected by energy can't live here. Yeah, this it's would possible. It. We have judgment here again. I'm getting arrests. I'm getting there's been capitulation um, with this world card and the judgment card, and secrets exposed. So, so it's going to start coming out. I think so. I don't foresee all of it coming out because it might be too painful. I just heard that um, it might be too painful for some people. I mean, somebody like your family, like your mom and everything, it, this might be really, really painful, especially for people who truly, truly love this town. Yeah, I never under. I, I really, I mean, I don't mean to sound like a bitch if anybody's watching from Rome. It has boggled my mind. Like, boggled my mind that people actually live here. I'm going to clarify the high priestess because I was told to. Clarify the high priestess. Okay, so we're going to clarify the high priestess. We had to take a little pause because stuff. I had to pull my hair back because it's hotter, hotter than hell out here. Sweat more than a church or I'm sweating harder than a whore at church. Is that the saying? That's so funny. <laughs> okay, so we have high priestess with lovers. Um... I don't know why, but this almost feels like... Is that sex magic? That's kind of what I was going with. You kind of read my mind there. Like, I feel like they're the dark probably side. orgies and... Uh, yeah, kund uh, Exactly. Um, and it's, it's now reversing, I feel like, with this fool card. And then we get the nine of wands. So it's like... You know, it's ending that cycle maybe let me clarify this more but oh, i had to fight to stop this yeah this is 70 how much money is in this damn town well it's weird because oh there was an offer made it's weird because it goes filthy rich extreme poor Filthy rich, extreme poor. It's like the cabal purposely is rubbing it in the poor people's faces. And when I say projects, it's like it's, super, super yeah. poor. We're talking like houses that really are, it's sad to even look at yeah. these houses. And then you go to the next street over and you got these gated communities, like a gated mansion or something. Like not yeah. mansion, but a really big house. So... And, that's been my next question. So I grew up in, with, with amongst the very, very, very rich families of Rome. I'm just going to be honest about that. Stephanie, do I know people who are actively in the cabal? Do I personally know people that are in the cabal? I don't think from your hometown. No, here in Rome. Do here I know in Rome? people? Yeah. I think some of your teachers were. Oh, I think some of my teachers were too. Yeah. But and are probably, there Probably uh, some friends, uh, their families maybe. Yeah, that's what I'm asking. So... Do I know? Do I know people? You want me to ask the cards? Yeah, ask the cards. Okay. I don't. I've never seen anything that I'm aware of, but I think, and Stephanie is right. I'm pretty sure. I drove Stephanie by my high school yesterday, which we can do a drive by today as well. It's nasty, isn't it? It just looks something like out of one of those movies that bad things happen. Yeah, it's an elite boarding school. It's one of the top ten boarding schools in the nation. It's high school I went to. I mean, people pay more to send their kids to fucking ninth grade than they do to medical school. Um, and I know for sure that some of my teachers were involved in Satanism. I mean, the school I went to has already had lawsuits now thrown on them for sexual abuse. So I want to make that clear. I don't, I've never seen anything happen, but I feel like I know people who are Satanists. 
and but they pretend like they're not. Yeah, you do. You do. I got an ace of wands, but yeah, you didn't see any. There was stuff that happened, but I didn't the see hanged anything. man is like I'm. I'm thinking like I didn't see it. Yeah. It, it's kind of oblivious. Do I do I intuitively know who these people are in my gut? The people I'm thinking about. Do I know who they are? Is my gut Does right? Bryce intuitively know in her gut who these people are. <coughs> I see you. I know. I think I know who you are. I think I know exactly who you are. And Ace I think of I, Cups. Yep, that's my card. That's my actual card. The Ace of Cups. I absolutely know who the fuck you are, even though I never saw you do anything. I never liked you. There's a few of you families out there that now I'm like, I know why I didn't like you. I know why I didn't like you. And it doesn't have anything to do with your money because my family was rich too. I just didn't like you. And now I know why. You were fucking doing this shit. I made a troubled water, so that popped out randomly. So let's get your asses at Gitmo. Yep. All right. And before we head out to our next location, I just wanted to give one last look from the top of Myrtle Hill. Live, that's where we were over there doing the reading face in the town. So again, this is just a big old hill, a mountain. It's full of graveyards. There's not any grave space left. All the grave plots have been taken. And as you just saw, we uh, got that there are 666 obelisk on Myrtle Hill. Again, the obelisk was originally used for something good. It was supposed to be your spine, your uh, shashumna, the pathway of energy that runs up your spine that brings in Christ consciousness. You can see quite a few out there on these Freemason graves in this cabal town. But the controllers have taken the obelisk and turned it into what they say is Osiris's penis because we know what they do in their sex magic rituals. So look at look at all those obelisks down there. Look at them all. They also work as antennas, just like steeples of churches do to harness energy. And if you're harnessing energy for the good, then awesome, but we're in Gog and Magog, baby. Last few hundred years has not been for the good. It's been post-apocalyptic all-out war for who controls this planet. <laughs>